I requested uh, Professor Manish Kumar uh, to give an idea about the uh, how the weathering processes impact the dissolution load, low trans transport, the the water quality in the sub in the area, and what are the other geological processes which may affect the uh, wall water quality in the pollution related material. So, Professor Manish Kumar is a faculty in Earth Sciences at IIT Gandhi Nagar. He did his MSc and MPhil from JNU and PhD from University of Tokyo and in the environmental engineering area. His main research area is water quality, isotopes, and water pollution, remedial measures. And uh, here, so I invite him to, uh, to discuss about the water quality and then chemistry I don't aspect know. of it. Yes, yes. Okay, I think I will be audible. Thank you very much, Professor Jain. Uh, this is a little bit, I felt today a little bit odd because first time I am getting introduced because within this, uh, otherwise uh, we you know, host uh, guest speakers. Um, so, and uh, this is a good uh, opportunity that uh, I would like to uh, share this. Of course, we I may disappoint you, but uh, the somewhere I will put you a path, intermediate path of uh, the geomorphology and geochemistry. Uh, that is what I will try to aim at. Um, and uh, let's see um, that. Uh, so then, uh, let let's uh, start from uh, water. And if weathering, weathering A B C of a weathering starts. So first, uh, we need water, and so we. Uh, this weathering starts as soon as the CO2 dissolves in it, right? Um, a lot of you will, uh, the lot of, how many, like how many types of weathering you know? Maybe physical weathering and chemical weathering. And within that, so I, I know that this group is very uh, specifically, so considering the, your knowledge, I am not going into that, okay, the, what is the physical weathering, what is the chemical weathering, but let's uh, start with the carbonate weathering. And carbonate weathering uh, starts as soon as CO2 dissolves into the HCO. And as soon as it will dissolve, what will it make? Some of you? H2CO3, then? Dissociate into SCO3 and H plus. Maybe this one will again dissociate into CO3, 2 minus plus. Again, H plus, right? And then what will happen to this CO3? And what will be the H plus and like that? And so if in, in a given water, let's suppose there is a river water, and I have a, uh, the, so then if the given water, whether there will be, I should measure H2CO3 or I should measure SCO3 or I should measure, measure CO3 to measure. What should be the measured? If I need to know, so then, and uh, can you say that at one uh, one time, uh, what do we measure in fact in the field? In the field we measure bicarbonate, but so do we think that there will be no carbonate or do there, do there will be no bicarbonic acid? And this is, once I say this line itself says that there is a equilibrium. There is a dynamic change between bicarbonate and SCO3 and SCO3 to bicarbon, uh, the uh, carbonate. So carbonate, bicarbonate, carbonic acid, and in this carbonic acid, sometimes is not known as carbonic acid because H2O and CO2, because uh, at uh, certain uh, the atmospheric pressure, the CO2 component will be much higher than the bicarbonate component, uh, the carbonic acid component. So many times we put the star here. So it means that there is a, all three species can exist, coexist, but how it will be? So then, what will be the one parameter that is going to determine this? Anybody? Of course, yes. Because you see that there is a, of course, the, so if I, just uh, one thing is that if I say that uh, the H plus is liberated into the water, bicarbonic acid has given rise to the bicarbonate and then uh, H plus, the pH will rise or pH will decrease? Decrease? Yeah. So be, the, here we are, we are just trying to, uh, I uh, try, I am trying to collect your fundamentals and the information that we don't forget that if H plus increases pH, 
decrease less, right. So, then this, this will become more acidic. This will all will help you in the coming slides. So, then at the one point, so now the first of all we would uh, like to talk that okay, um, that okay, the how the pH will affect and uh, and uh, then of course and how it it has happened it has happened uh, the CO2 becomes H2CO2 right so if CO2 increases in the uh, system in a water system the pH will decrease or increase so if if the CO2 if CO2 is increases so then you said that CO2 increases, pH increases. And if CO2 removes, then it means decreases, then the pH decreases. Is it so? And if it is so, please uh, the tell me is that uh, the, and what is the process through which CO2 can increase and the CO2 can decrease? CO2 can increase due to respiration, right. If let's suppose there is a lake, so if there is a lake and let's uh, some phytoplanktons are there, so in the during day, so during day what will happen? More respiration will occur, so, so in water, of course, right now the atmospheric CO2 and then water CO2, there is equilibrium, okay, the, the, this, the, there is a CO2 in the water originally because of the atmospheric pressure of the CO2. Atmospheric, atmospheric pressure of the CO2 will not increase or decrease the diurnal, but it will maybe the in years or the climate change or like that. But at the, this time, atmospheric CO, the, but just because it becomes day, phytoplankton will start uh, doing photosynthesis and then it will start consuming CO2. It, it will fix CO2. And you know, when it is uh, night, only respiration will happen, photosynthesis will stop. So then uh, the respiration will give rise to CO2. So the pH of a lake, if I measure in morning or if I ma measure in evening, will be, will be different or same? What? Same or different? Oh my God. How many of you think different? Please raise your hand. And how many of you think same? And how many of you forgot?
Now tell me, how many of you think there will be a change in pH during day or evening? Raise your hand. Check it. But what you want? I have seen all that in that festival. Then I. Intermediate compound. This is an intermediate compound because in water, either it and carbon, uh, the it just uh, so then and see your go. So then, uh, the Right now, just uh, need to understand or okay, uh, that there is a H plus involved. So CO2 can change the pH of water. Yes or no? Yes. yes. There we are. Right? Anybody is still saying no? Yes. So in that case, uh, the so is that CO2 uh, the addition or the regassing of the CO2 or the addition of the CO2 can change the pH, and then pH can become the agent. That is the only the things that, uh, so here, any more conditions? Uh, they are giving a respiration, net change. Net change which means what, in 24 Wait, hours? Carbon dioxide, amount of carbon dioxide, net in, change. In, in 24 hours you mean? Yes, yes, yes. In 24 hours, uh, this is much more tricky question. I need to do okay. some uh, research on that. That uh, she is saying that the, this is a lake, and in the during day or during that, I told you that there will be a change of pH if I measure in the morning and if I measure in the mm. uh, evening because of the photosynthesis stopped in the during the night yes. and because of the uh, photosynthesis happening in during the day. Yes. So then CO2 gas uh, evolves or the degassing or addition happens, yes. so CO2 will change. Now her question is that whether this will, on a daily basis, will remain constant or not? Yes. Whether the amount of the CO2 taken in the photosynthesis will be equivalent to the, uh, the CO2 released during the respiration or not? Yes, sir. Very nice research question, I would say. Because uh, the, here, it depends on the photosynthetic rate. Yes. Because I don't know that how much percentage of the uh, phytoplankton belongs to the photosynthetic group. If there is a, like, it, if 25% is there, if 100% of them are the photosynthesis and respiration, still I am not sure that respiration, respiratory rate and photosynthetic rate will be same or not. Mm. So there will be uh, the quite, quite a lot of variable there, and it can be an interesting question, and it can change, it can be varying from lake to lake. Yes. But one thing will not vary, go to any lake is uh, the, of course, not high altitude lake, because there is no, not much photosynthesis and not much phytoplankton are there. So there you can see that there is a uh, not much pH change. So then if somebody asks, if you see a, a research happening on the pH lake, you can even question, when did you measure this pH of your lake was? Right? So I, I have given you the one thing that you can, uh, you sleep during the presentation, get up and say, when did you measure the pH? And there will be the uh, effect of this, this one, because you can talk about this CO2 uh, equilibrium. So let's move. Um, so I already talked about this CO2, H2O, CO3. I, so then, and that will not only the pH, it will also affect alkalinity and hardness. Because as soon as the CO3, I told you that what will happen to this CO3? This CO3 will then precipitate uh, uh, the magnesium, it will precipitate the calcium. So then water, I, I, the anions, uh, the cations that is present in the water will also precipitate them. So one CO2, we added and doing so much stuff. And this, uh, the magnesium, and if you remove calcium and magnesium from the water, it means it reduces the hardness. And if, the, and this all cations contributes to the alkalinity. So once CO2 will affect pH, it will affect the hardness of the water, it will affect the alkalinity of the water. Let's kill this CO2. So, so then this, this is the, this is the what it is, uh, the happening, so here, 
I am talking about surface water system. So still we are in the river or lake. So still, uh, so it, it's fine until here. Then I told you again <coughs> that the pH, uh, if CO2, uh, the, the CO put input respiration, so then produces H plus decreases pH. So if there is a more respiration, so, so then in uh, the, if CO2 will be added, the pH will uh, the decrease. And if CO2 will remove, the pH will uh, the increase. So in that case, uh, the, if you don't understand that, uh, what will happen? Because many times, even if I will give you the, whatever the concept I will give, you will forget next thing. That's why it says that chemistry, Radko, Riyad Karo, Subha. So, but what I will give you the some rules. P4, pH. P4, photosynthesis. So, if photosynthesis happens, pH will increase. Ab ye kon sa concept hai, I don't know. But this is uh, the only thing is that if you just want to remember or if you have some confusion, you only know that the if uh, photosynthesis happens, the, uh, by the uh, evening, the pH will increase. And then you know that photosynthesis kya hua? CO2 add hua tha. And if the CO2 uh, and uh, so that the photosynthesis CO2 remove hua tha. So, then the CO2 remove hone ke karan pH bada tha. Right. I, this one, if you remember P4 photosynthesis, P4 pH, you, you, have, you will have a hold on this geochemistry that you can always throw on. You can always say, Achha, CO2 dalenge water mein to kya hoga? pH badega ki ghatega? Uh, now I am asking. If we add the CO2, the pH will increase or decrease? The you see, <laughs> if we remove this, so then what happens is that the equilibria works like this. Here the reactant if it is less, product will be more. What happens? If reactant will increase, the forward reaction will be so high so that this, this uh, the concentration of this should become less. And again new equilibria should be established. So photosynthesis removes uh, the CO2. So then backward reaction starts getting rapid. And what is the backward reaction? It means H plus getting combined here, this combines here, this combines here, and it releases CO2. So whatever the CO2 they are removing due to the photosynthesis, the, uh, the, the carbonate equilibria starts giving the, this one. So and in the result, what happens? pH increases because H plus gets consumed. But if CO2 you added, it releases H plus. So pH gets decreased. Okay, but at the end of the day, I would just tell you that photosynthesis P for photosynthesis P for pH photosynthesis hoga pH badhega addition hoga. That also, if you can confuse, you are uh, good. Aapka <laughs> so then it means uh, the and so um, this is there, and I told you which means the carbonate weathering. Uh, the this is. This is carbonate cycle, the surface water, and this is photosynthesis and respiration is a biological process. So this biological process can affect pH, pH can affect weathering, weathering can affect cation uh, concentration, and these cations and all you can know that okay the uh, how much is happening and like that. This is message number one. So uh, in the whole lecture I will give you four to five messages and finish. I am not going to do much uh, hard work here. Okay. Will the pH of a lake vary during the day? Water temperature is a factor. Good. That is also a factor. pH, uh, there is a also because temperature will affect Henry's law. Henry says that, do you know Henry's law? Uh, why you will know? Henry is not my friend. So, Henry's law says that the solubility, Solubility decreases due to the temperature or increases with the temperature. Because if you dissolve a salt, a salt in the water, and if you uh, warm it, dissolution will be higher, right? And if there is a gas, then it, the solubility will decrease. So for gas, it is a reverse, and if it is a salt, 
it is a uh, direct lipoprotein. So, the temperature can increase the solubility of a salt, but temperature can decrease the solubility of a gas, right. So, then uh, and because of that, but the CO2 dissolution, how much CO2 will be there in the water? If temperature is high, more less CO2 can dissolve and that is why the pH will be different. And that is why this cola, cola is bicarbonate, this is coke, coke water, why you say give me more chilled? Yeah, because at low temperature more gas will be dissolved and you will have more chilling effect. And that is why more burping, because the water that you have taken it has more CO2 dissolved into that. But once you have taken, again there is the equilibria will establish between the atmospheric CO2 and that and then you will have, okay. Carbon dioxide reacts with water or dissolves in water. These are some common sense. And you know the good thing about common sense? It is very uncommon. What is that? Huh? What? <laughs> Dissociates, this is dissolves, reacts or dissolves. Actually, it is both. The carbon dioxide, if it can dissolve, then that is why I told you that this bicarbonic acid, bicarbonate, uh, carbonic acid and star means not all CO2 has converted into the bicarbonic acid. But maybe some CO2 is still just dissolving as a gas, but not has reacted as. So then, uh, the, these are the question is that the carbon dioxide reacts as well as dissolves in the water. Okay. Then photosynthesis versus pH. Photosynthesis will increase the pH or decrease the pH? Increase. Try to forget it. I challenge you. The last day I will come and ask you that whether photosynthesis will be more, pH will be more or less. Try to forget it. If you have Okay, so that is the uh, lake system that I already told you photosynthesis pH will be higher because CO2 is being consumed. It is the CO2 who, when the respiration will occur, CO2 will be added and CO2 will be added and this will decrease the pH, right. So then this is the flux of carbon dioxide and its influence on pH, okay. So then you can ask that, so what is the good time to measure the pH of a lake if you want to research, but of course you can say the time and all that stuff. Carbon dioxide not only dissolves in water, it reacts with it also, right. So, I have given the answer, okay. Now, now what? Now, let us let's go and dissolve. So far, what we have done is that, the, okay, uh, the CO2 we dissolved and it made the carbonate and carbonate has precipitated the CO2. Sir. Right. Sir, I did not understand the difference between this dissolution and reaction, right. The dissolved, dissolved is, of course, the, I, I would say that uh, the reaction, I, the next, uh, if I will see, see, actually CO2 is at 25 degrees centigrade, about 600 times more abundant than H2CO3. It means the temperature becomes a factor and even the pressure becomes a factor because reaction will have, will be the empirical relation. H2, how many H2O can dissolve, uh, react with how many CO2? This is just empirical uh, the relationship, 1 is to 1. One mole of H2O can dissolve only one mole of CO2. But is it so? No. With the more pressure, Henry's law says that the, if there is a more pressure, it is like there. So, what do we do in the cola bottle and why that cap is that much? Because just we want to increase the more pressure of the CO2. So, if partial pressure of CO2 becomes more, it will can dissolve more into the water. However, it cannot react because there is a 1 is to 1 ratio. Right, that is the difference between these two. I hope, but difficult to explain. Okay, so then I already told you that now we have made the calcium carbonate. I already told that how it can affect the uh, hardness and alkalinity. Now let's see that how it is happening in the open system and closed system. It means that here what is happening is that if there is open system, means the atmospheric CO2 can be exchanged. There is nothing in between. So, it means that the, it can exchange. So, this is a ground water table or let us suppose that. Uh, so, then it can exchange with the uh, CO2. So, then CO2 directly can exchange. So, here in open system the CaCO3 dissolution occurs simultaneously. So, CO2 dissolves into H2O and it breaks down the CaCO3. CO3 is calcium carbonate. And so, calcium carbonate is broken down and calcium ion and H2SO3 
uh, is released into the water. But in closed system, uh, the open, if there is a, of course, the water and those things, so sometimes it can be only uh, the H2CO3 and this, uh, the, this reaction. So sometimes first H2CO3 will be formed and that H2CO3 will break down the CaCO3. So my point here is that in this equation, what is happening is that weathering of CaCO3, breaking down of CaCO3 will has consumed CO3. Just one, one thing that I wanted to make a message that <coughs> because uh, I, I had to prepare a lot for this class because of these three guys or four guys because I knew that they will not shy of asking questions so <laughs> and they are doing research on that. So today I am doing is that, so then I, what I will say is that how weathering rate is directly proportional to the CO2 consumption. How you can, from now on, you can say that our reverse do, does not only does so many things, but also remove CO2 from the atmosphere. So if we are polluting the CO2, uh, the, if that's what means that if partial pressure, if, if atmospheric CO2 will be increasing, the, I already told, just remember that it will dissolve more bicarbonic or the H2CO3 will be formed more. So there will be, of course, it will be not, it will not go up to the infinity, but it can dissolve more. And weathering, how weathering can say be savior of this one is that here you have seen that the calcium carbonate weathering, but weathering is breaking down. So calcium carbonate has broken down calcium and bicarbonate, and this has consumed one mole of CO2. So one mole of CO2 is consumed by one mole of CO3 breakdown. So many times the calcium carbonate Generally, concept is that the CaCO3 means calcium plus CO2 minus, right? So the calcium carbonate will give to the CO2 minus this one, but here the you can see that the CO2 the is being consumed during the weathering. Okay, don't go uh, the. <coughs> so sometimes uh, the it can occur simultaneously, and sometimes it can occur uh, the of course the in uh, separate. And that is there in the open and closed system and like that. So I would uh, talk much uh, more if you want afterwards. And that's why I told you that CO2, H2O3 and H2CO3 is the intermediate compound. But more, again we start from the place is that, so if, so uh, what was the question? That if I, I know that my, uh, like uh, Ravi has already told me, that the, uh, whether water uh, will have the bicarbonic acid or bicarbonate or carbonate, this will depend on the pH. So if my, the, and we measure in the field mainly bicarbonate, of course, we also measure carbonate. So we, if we go to the field, we measure bicarbonate and carbonate. But generally, many times we also measure the carbonate, uh, the bicarbonate, and just by bicarbonate, and if we measure pH. So if I know the 7.5 is my pH, I will be no, I can tell that whether there will be any carbonate existing in that water or not. Because of this simple chemistry. Chemistry is good because uh, the, of course there are a lot of exceptions, but this is, so H2O, H plus OH, this is the KW and so if I will arrange, let's suppose this equation I arrange. So if this uh, equation I arrange, as the, it will be HCO3 and H2CO3 and uh, 10, um, uh, 10 to the power minus 6, 3 and 10 to the power minus pH. So if at, if this, if these concentration will become 1, then pH will become 6.3. So which means that at 6.3, the concentration of bicarbonate and concentration of bicarbonic acid in the water should be exactly same. Which means that this is the 6.3, uh, this is a graph. This is the graph, this is pH, and of course, let's suppose this is the percentage of uh, this one. So then, uh, the, if you will increase the bicarbonate, so at the 6.3 pH, the, the amount of bicarbonate and uh, the bicarbonic acid and bicarbonate will be exactly same. And from that pH, 6.3, the bicarbonate amount will increase. And at <coughs> here, a sort of that now the no more bicarbonic acid will exist and only the, there will be, diff, uh, the in the system there will be bicarbonic acid and carbonate acid. 
uh, the uh, carbonate. And because at 10.3 pH with the same law, and then uh, 10, uh, the same, if you will arrange this, uh, 10, at 10.3, the CO3 and bicarbonate will, uh, will become equal. So, at 7.5, I told you, I gave you that example, around 7.5 pH, I can tell with full confidence there will be no bicarbonic acid in the water. There will be, mostly it will be bicarbonate. And why we only measure bicarbonate in the field? Because you see this, this is 7 to 9, is the general pH water of the, in the environment. Even sea water is 8 point something. So in that case, the, uh, the, so in that case, that's why there is no bicarbonic acid we are measuring in the field. And sometimes we measure carbonate and bicarbonate, but you, we can know. But once you have the 10, 10 pH of the water, you must measure that how, may, how much of the water, uh, how much is the uh, is as in the carbonate. At that time, reporting uh, the alkalinity in, in forms of the carbonate and bicarbonate becomes very uh, the important. So this is a carbonate and pH variation. And uh, so <coughs> good thing about this is that there is 6.3, 10.3. So you don't have to give bother much. And 6 and 3, 3, 1, just 3, 3, 2, just 6. I don't know. This just I am giving that like the pH photosynthesis can increase pH similarly 6, 6.3 and then 4 add karke 10 plus 3. So then 6.3 pH the bicarbonic acid and carbonate will be equal at 10.3 bicarbonate and then carb uh, the carbonate will be right. And if you can without seeing this if you can say this you know that at, at 10.3 pH bicarbonate and carbonate will be equal. Your friends will think that he has come with the good workshop. <laughs> so then, then this is the uh, this one. So let's uh, come to the now the rock. I would not uh, tell much about because uh, I like chemistry, but I don't like rock. Uh, so then this is there. But one thing I can say is that carbonate rock can make trigonal and then also orthorhombic, and that depends on that uh, except calcium. If you will see. This is the very high ionic radius, and uh, that is why um, the if ionic radius is bigger than orthorhombic uh, minerals, if it is a less ionic radius, then this is a trigonal. Only one thumb rule. And if uh, um, if you will measure, uh, and uh, you know that many times this is the uh, group one, B magic can under. So this is the group two A element. So this group 2A element, if you will see, so then except this calcium, so this is the major, <coughs> bigger size, and that is why the estancium, barium, and uh, the lead makes the orthorhombic, otherwise this one. So just here I am again giving you take home messages, not uh, the other thing. Of course, if you want to remember, <coughs> you should all uh, remember the dolomite, you should not forget that calcium, magnesium, carbonate is the dolomite, and of course the calcite, uh, the Many times uh, the calcite is not CaCl2, but cal calcium carbonate. Many times that is the, uh, the confusion and all that stuff. Um, so, so far what we have seen that the how CO2 can change the uh, complexion of the water, uh, how much is the cationic water and pH, how pH can, uh, can determine that at uh, the, how much percentage of the bicarbonic acid or carbonate or bicarbonate will be there in the water. This is the recap. Now, the up, now we went to the field and we took the water sample and we measured the pH, sodium, magnesium, calcium, chloride, alkalinity, sulfate. Now, what is the difference between these two? So then, uh, the, if they, like, uh, so this is the sample, what is a very identical temperature, okay, so the pH has uh, different, uh, very same sodium, very same magnesium. Chloride is also identical, what is, and sulfate is also very identical. Difference is alkalinity and calcium. So we can just, uh, the, we can uh, definitely say that there is a carbonate weathering that is affecting this groundwater chemistry. And because of the, of course, the more uh, the calcium, so more calcium is, uh, the more, it means, the why calcium is higher and the alkalinity is also higher because it has broken down and given rise to calcium as well as carbonate. So that is why the alkalinity and with the calcium alkalinity is increasing. That means that carbonate rock has been broken down. 
and that has given the calcium ion into the in, in the water and carbonate and alkalinity in the water. As simple as that, right? So now you are a doctor of water. You can see the water test, okay, hemoglobin and this, this, this thing, oh, carbonate weathering, you got cancer. So that is the what uh, the, you can, uh, uh, the, we can do that. And uh, yeah, I already talked about this, so I would uh, skip. Now, how this CO2 can vary? I mean, I have already told you about, I, this is a bit difficult, I don't know whether you will understand it or not. But still, I took the challenge to bring this graph. I would have omit this because you don't know the content of this presentation, right? So then, but if, but if you know that photosynthesis can consume the CO2 and respiration can give the CO2, then you will be knowing that the, what is the partial pressure of the CO2 in the soil. So CO2 can occur in the soil also if there is no water, right? So then, if there is a uh, land where there is a gravel. I don't know what is gravel pit, but there is no grass. Uh, woodland, grassland, golf course. Golf course is very green. So, so much high photosynthesis, less and then less and then less. So, if I will see the where will be the more partial pressure of CO2 in the soil? Golf course, then grassland, then then how many of you think he is right? Partial pressure, PCO2. Matlab, ye to wahi baat ho gai ki partial pressure of CO2 ki ek, ek box hai isme tumne abhi agar major kiya ya partial pressure of CO2 yaha kya hai? 0.003 volume by volume. Similarly, the, agar hum usme to kitna soil mein, jo hume, CO, kitna CO2, if there is a pore space, how much CO2 is more? Yes. So, um, okay, so then why you said so? Yes, so he is saying that the golf course may bahut sara grass hai, it will have more photosynthesis and it will take the uh, CO2, so it will take the, the CO2 from the soil also, the root will take uh, the CO2, so then partial pressure of CO2 in the soil will be, will be less in the golf course than this, than this, than this, and you know what? Or reverse. So in that case, uh, the so then uh, the in summer CO2 production is highest and lowest during the late. Uh, the, of course, here again you can see uh, the sub. Let's let's uh, take this one. Is that if there is a um, in the temperature, if there is a winter, there is no. Uh, the temperature and like that. So during winter, groundwater is degassing to the atmosphere. So maybe in the August, uh, the this is the the soil pressure. That's why I told you that the little bit uh, this is uh, a bit tricky. But uh, the of course there is a change between the seasonal variation and then uh, the CO2 in the uh, the with the soil and also then. So then we have to just one thing that has come into across is that that CO2 has taken. He is correct that the in the Gulf there was a CO2 has been taken by the root and photosynthesis. Then there is a water which has now water has equilibria with the soil PCO2. So then if the, we will remove the CO2, then this water will give a start give rising the CO2. So the degassing will occur. And that will, of course, I, I can give you the this uh, the slide, and you can see that the how. Uh, winter and summer will affect the CO2, the partial pressure of CO2 in the soil, and also how this grass uh, land and those things can affect this uh, the CO2 partial pressure in the soil also. So it means that water. I what I have. Uh, this is related to this. Uh, the, this is related to here, because we are now talking about the partial pressure in here, and if there is a here, so if this this plant will take more gas, the CO2, then the uh, the groundwater will release the CO2 into here, so degassing will occur. And if there will be uh, the CO2 input, then there will be more dissolution in the, uh, the groundwater. So there is not much, uh, the, that is only the concept. There is no any uh, the variation here. And uh, okay, so then uh, this, this is the, uh, the one, and of course, uh, you can anytime come. 
Um, now, the, this is the uh, is uh, one uh, last two slides for the carbonate weathering and like that. Is that how carbonate weathering can affect affected by evapotranspiration? If evapotranspiration is high, the carbonate weathering will be higher, or the uh, the mean growing season soil PCO2 will be higher in the region where there is a more uh, the activity or the more evapotranspiration. And for evapotranspiration, the area should be more temperature as well as more rain. It's not like so in Gujarat there will be high evapotranspiration or in Assam will be more high evapotranspiration. Huh? That is transpiration. Evaporation, if there is no water to evaporate, where will be the evaporation? Yeah, so that's why the more rain falls, the more water available for evaporation. So then, uh, yes. So then uh, this is the one. So this is, what is this? Soil, soil PCO2. The, the soil PCO2 is, the soil PCO2 is all are minus. So this is the minus 1.8, minus 2.2. So which one is higher? Minus 1.8. You see, where is India? This one? So this, this, this place is, is the more, more evapotranspiration. So this is more soil, CO, soil CO2 will be there, and in this part there will be less CO2 will be there. In this, uh, the portion there will be. So then wherever the, so this is the very day directly relationship between the, the evapotranspiration and also the, uh, the soil CO2 and like that. So, so far we have seen this, uh, the CO2 and all, I, I would just keep because this is a cast aquifer and uh, how it will uh, mix. So this is just because uh, we are, now, we have already seen this one, calcium plus bicarbonate, calcium carbonate, CO2 and this one, and it can go back to also that calcium carbonate and CO2 gives the bicarbonate. Now the silicate weathering, silicate weathering is calcium CiO3. Now this calcium, uh, the, cal uh, the silicate, to break down the calcium silicate into calcium and silica, the, uh, the silicic acid, again it consumes CO2. So now, nor only the, uh, not only the CO, the CA, CO, uh, carbonate weathering consumes CO2, but silicate weathering also consumes CO2. It means weathering can remove CO2 from the atmosphere. And uh, so now let's talk about the silicate weathering. I, so then weathering of silicate minerals acts as an important CO2 sink, and 45 percent due to the, in the river. In river we have the dissolved uh, the solids. And the total dissolved loads of the world's river, 45 percent is contributed by silicate weathering. So then, uh, that is the uh, one point. Now, in, on this slide, we will uh, the, see this one. So what will be the effect of silicate weathering in a water? Amne kya kiya? If you want to do this experiment in the, uh, in the laboratory, what you can do is that you take one beaker of the water, or it's make oil silicate rock, silicate rock. And you put the water, and then even even you can put the on the outside, so there is a weathering. So after five years, one sal bad. <laughs> and you you take in the account. Okay, how much is the pH? How much is the sodium? How much is the calcium? How much is magnesium? Everything you measured. Now five years later, pH, sodium, potassium, silica. What will happen? Huh? pH pe hum sodium ka kya hoga? It will increase. Calcium, magnesium. So here you can see this is a silicate rock, and this is a reaction that okay it and for weathering what needs water is needed, and then uh, it makes the the kaolinite and it releases sodium and silica. That means in all the first one thing that I want to tell, want you to know is there is a, there is called congruent weathering and incongruent weathering. Congruent weathering means complete weathering. Complete weathering means if there is a, it started with this, and what is weathering is that removing of silica. So in that case, uh, if there is no silica remaining, if this uh, albite becomes bauxite, bauxite is, or gibbsite, A-L-O-H-3. So then it means there is no silica. So from here, where there was a three silica, becomes no silica, complete weathering. 
and if it, it makes any intermediate compound, uh, the, the product in between, we call it incomplete weathering or incongruent weathering. And so it means the plain L albite changing into KLB night is a incongruent weathering. And what is there is that the here silica and aluminum ratio is 1 is to 1. Here aluminum and silica ratio is 1 is to 3. So where silica is more? Here. So that's why, so <laughs> kaolinite cannot become the, of course, the, this is, that is not weathering. So weathering is when silica ratio is decreased. So then this is a in, incongruent weathering and a step by step it is happening. Of course, these are the, the different uh, com, uh, the rocks that have uh, happening. So then what is one clear thing is that silicate weathering give rise to cation. It imparts cation into the water. It is very much important. Today, I am going to teach my overall goal is to let you ca the calculate CO2 weathering rate, uh, the uh, chemical weathering rate, and through that you will know that a river can consume how much CO2. That is my ultimate goal of this lecture. So then you have to understand that the silicate weathering can give rise to cation into the water. So after five years, whatever the thing, the, all cations is going to increase. All or not, if there is a calcium bearing minerals or not, that is a different thing, but the, of course the cation will increase. Then it will consume H plus. This weathering consumes H plus. Why H plus it consumes? So then pH of the water will? It removes H plus. So then pH after five years, if you will uh, take the P, measure the pH of that water, the pH will increase. So silicate weathering can give the pH of the water will increase due to the silicate weathering. Cation will increase into the water. And uh, so the, at least these two things will occur. And also this one is that the silica, silicic acid, if you will measure, it will add more. Okay. One is very satisfying thing is that you can, uh, the, so then uh, how to uh, balance the equation. So balance the equation is, if you want, you can have that NaAlSi3 and then O8 is giving uh, the, if you know, Al2Si2 and O5OH4. So then uh, this is, you have the reactant, you have the product. So what you have to do is that, first you have to see that uh, the, if all the elements is balanced or not. So aluminum is here 1, here aluminum is 2, which means it has to be 2, right? Here we have aluminum, how will aluminum from 2 aluminum? So we have to add, it means it needs 2 reactants, right? Now, this is 6 silica, but here there is only 2 silica. It means it will give 4 H4 SiO2, right? So it means it will give 4 H4 SiO2. Now, if you will count those sodium, uh, the, of course, it means there will be two sodium. Then, now everything is balanced, I think. Uh, aluminum 2, aluminum 2, uh, the silica, 6, silica, uh, the, of course, the 4 and plus 2, 6. Now we have to balance oxygen. Here, if you will balance hydrogen first, you will, you will be not able to balance the equation. So you have to first oxygen. First, lo, till hydrogen ko balance karo. Uh, so then you, uh, if you forget that hydrogen ko balance karna tha ki oxygen ko balance karna tha, tabhi tumko lena tha ki pehle saans lena hai. And uh, so first you have to balance the oxygen. So then if you will balance the oxygen, so then uh, this was the O8, it means that there is a 16 uh, oxygen. And here if you will see, so then 5 plus 9, so then uh, 9, then this is the 8, uh, 16, it means the 25. So 25, uh, the oxygen is there. And here it is only 16. It means 9 oxygen, this compound needs more oxygen. So oxygen, how we will give the oxygen? In form of oxygen cylinder? <laughs> how we will provide oxygen to that reactant? With water, right? So we will add water. So 9 H2O. So now we, we know that 9 H2O is given. Now, now calculate H plus and you are done. And if you will calculate the H plus, so then this is no H, this is 18H, and this is 16, and yes. So, 
So it means how? This is 9, 9 into uh, the 18, and then it's 4, 4, and 16, 20. So 4 plus 16, 20. So then uh, this is 18. So then 2 is Right? So then uh, the you have, now you have balanced the equation. Okay? So what we did, we first me measured the aluminum, then we balanced the silica, then we balanced the oxygen, then we balanced the hydrogen. And then you are not scared of this equation. And you can balance and you will know that what is the effect of the, any question? Calcium, uh, increase in calcium will increase the alkalinity yeah. and that calcium will be in dissolved form or in precipitated form? The, the dissolved form, if it is precipitated, it is out of the water, end but of so, the story. But so, uh, when we talk about marine environment, there is calcium carbonate depth, yeah, CCD. I can though, see calcium compensation depth, uh, yes, this is, I, and I calcium, heard of it. Calcium is precipitated in the alkaline environment, I think. No. This, that is okay. That is entirely different ball game. But I am telling you what what is happening. Calcium component compensation depth means calcium. I already told you that the partial pressure of the calcium, uh, the CO2 is also going to be much more effective. It means there is a calcium, there is a CO2, and if partial pressure of CO2, I I don't change the concentration of CO2 because uh, the CS calcium and CO2 will make the CO CO3. It means that we need optimum amount of CO2 there. But if we go down, then the CO2 decrease, uh, the amount will decrease. Hmm. So then even something which is bicarbonate may disintegrate. So in that case, the, there is a, uh, the, uh, that is the, the what happening with the depth and like that because partial pressure of CO2 is decreasing. CO2, how much is dissolved in the water decreases and that's why the CaCO3 which was as a conquer here, it becomes calcium plus and CO2. But in alkaline environment, calcium is uh, like precipitated, no? No, no, no. So then my, the calcium and the precipitation will depend on K value. Just see. Every equation has one, the, the constant, reaction constant. So then uh, the so reaction constant, let's suppose that 10 to the power minus 6 D is the, this is KW, right? KW or KH. Why K? KH7, H plus and OH minus will remain same, right? H7 neutral pH, H plus and OH minus is same, so the pH is 7. Now, once the H plus increases, the pH will decrease. So it means the, so this is the equilibria, and so that's why uh, the precipitation will depend whether ionic product is more than the KW or not. Let's suppose, uh, this, this is a uh, the calcium 2 plus and CO3 2 minus and this becomes CH2 3, right? So then there is a equilibrium constant. At equilibrium constant, there is a CaCO3 and then there is a calcium and there is a CO3. Now, this, this side equation is called precipitation. This is a precipitation of calcium carbonate. This side equation is called dissolution. It means calcium carbonate is breaking down, right? Now, this depends on that how much concentration, whether this ionic product of this is higher than the, this A. So, this, if it is 1, this both will be equal. If it becomes more than 1, then the, of course, the, if more than 1, it means more precipitation will happen. More than 1 means this, this A has to be the more than the this. This means the calcium carbonate precipitation will occur more. So, this depends on the ionic the product of the reaction. Okay, um, so then uh, the, this is uh, there. Uh, okay, so then what was there, I have already told you is that albite, albite give mantomorolinite, uh, albite is give scaolinite, and albite is give gibbsite. So this is a congruent weathering because there is all silica gone. And so this is a complete weathering and of course you can have, there can be mantomorolinite can give the scaolinite, scaolinite can give the gibbsite. That can also occur. It's not that only albite will give you this one. I hate this name because uh, the, I like everything starts with M because my name is with M. But except this person, I mean uh, this rock. So, 
So this in, in Assamese maybe we will call Morillo. So then this is the Mento Morillo night and you can see that there is a, so much uh, the equation is 0 0.5, 1.5 and like that. Uh, and uh, this is there. But what is difference here is that the, it depends if I will say where if I took a rock, uh, uh, took a soil, I am measure whether so 10 percent is Mento Morillo night, 30 uh, percent is Kevli night, 50 percent is Gibbs night. This soil cannot belong to a dry place because this needs lot of water. A lot of water is needed for a albite or kaolinite to convert into the gibbsite. So this kind of soil cannot exist in a dry place. So rainfall can also determine the type of the minerals present in the soil or those, those things. So then this is the mean annual rainfall and this is the weight percentage in the soil. So bauxite, that's why the bauxite is found in Ranchi or those, those places where the upper or those places where is that there are a lot of, so mean, annual mean, mean for rainfall, if it is higher than 80, maybe there will be perhaps no Montemorillonite exists in that water, uh, in that soil. And the kaolinite will induce like that. So how rainfall can affect the uh, percentage of the bauxite or those things in the, uh, in the minerals or those things can be seen here. Okay. Are you able to appreciate it? Okay. Um, so then uh, I, I finish this one. So then uh, now, uh, again I told you blood test. Similarly, if you know that there is a calcium and bicarbonate, if you know that sodium bicarbonate and kuch nahi, hame ye concentration could can be different. But if the molar ratio is in like one mole of sodium, one mole of bicarbonate and two mole of sodium, uh, the silica, that means it is a sodium filled how to say, uh, the digging, uh, the, without going and taking the sample, we can say that this kind of mineral must be present. So I took the water from the groundwater, I measured the groundwater and see that, okay, what is the molar ratio of sodium, calcium, silica, I can tell what kind of rock will be there. Isn't it fascinating? So similarly is the biotite. So, and what is there? There is no, nothing, but only potassium is present only in biotite form. Why we call it biotite? Because <coughs> potassium is taken by or needed by the microorganism. And this can also relate to the arsenic geochemistry. Because arsenic geochemistry is that, okay, the one hypothesis is that microbial biodegradation and it needs to uh, break down the mineral containing arsenic and it leaves through the arsenic mobilization in the water. So then uh, the many times it can connect uh, the chemistry with that. Okay, so that was the only thing that I have uh, told that. So then you convert your, you will measure in milligram per liter. You convert it into millimole and uh, check the molar, uh, molar ratio. You will be knowing that what kind of rock must be there in the. Okay, now coming to the uh, last, uh, the some parts is that oh, now, uh, silicate weathering finish, silica, uh, carbonate weathering finish. Now let's know where it will be that this is the zone of carbonate weathering. Only, uh, only and only if there is a cast aquifer or only the very, very dominantly calcium carbonate rock present there. So then this is the both type of weathering will be happening uh, there. So then uh, carbonate weathering, so this is the, there and I have already told you that now the, this is a river. And so then there is a calcium carbonate, this is the silica. Calcium carbonate, one calcium carbonate takes one mole of the CO2, one uh, the, of course the, uh, this is, uh, will consume the CO2. So both silicate with, this is carbonate weathering and silicate weathering will consume the CO2. So, and uh, that means the, you can measure the consumption rate and if you want, you can uh, correlate it with the climate change. And so for this, I, I think uh, Ravi Kant is also doing in uh, many parts of this Deccan plate and all that. But we have done for Brahmaputra and we have measured the how much TDS flux is there in the water. Uh, and then we have seen that the, what is the weathering rate and the CO2 consumption uh, in the Brahmaputra and we have found that it is higher than Ganga. And this is the also not higher than Ganga but of course the even Amazon and uh, the world average, but of course the most close uh, to that is Ganga uh, itself. And uh, so then, um, and 
So this is the and carbonate weathering is much higher. Uh, the, the CO2 consumption due to carbonate weathering is much higher in the uh, in uh, Brahmaputra, but in Ganga the silicate weathering carbonate uh, the carbon consumption due to silicate weathering is high. So these things we can calculate. If you want to know that uh, the and this is the world average and like that we have. Uh, so we, if you want to, this is also published. We have done for the Godavari uh, River Basin. And what we have done? We went, uh, the, this is the, uh, the 11 location. And, uh, the, uh, and we, from the 11 location, we collected the water. We measured the simple major ion and major cation. And we measured the uh, pH. And we did the molar ratio. And due to the molar ratio, and then, of course, uh, the, and now, see, this is the total cation. And this is the calcium. So this, if I plot calcium magnesium milli equivalent I, and uh, total cation, so then if, so here, the, when I plotted total cation versus sodium potassium, this, this is one is to one line. It means this area has more silicate weathering, more silicate weathering because silicate comes, silicate weathering can give sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium all four, but carbonate weathering will give only calcium, magnesium. So then calcium, magnesium, and this relationship is less, uh, the less um, str stronger than the sodium, potassium. So, so silicate weathering is more prominent here. Now, this is the equation that we will use. So how much CO2 will consume is depends on that how much uh, cation has come from the silica. And how much silica uh, cation has come from the silica is if we have to do, uh, we have to elaborate that is 2 calcium, silica, 2 magnesium, sodium, and uh, this one into discharge by drainage area. So the, what is the discharge of that river? What is the drainage area of that river? If you will multiply, you will know that how much CO2 consumption will occur due to the silicate weathering. And uh, now, you must be, can you, do you have any question here? And this is the carbonate weathering. So carbonate weathering, how much cation comes from the carbonate? And so it means the calcium plus magnesium into discharge by drainage. I can calculate that how much CO2 consumed due to the carbonate weathering. Any question here? Is it a good question to ask which weathering reaction will consume more CO2, like silicate weathering or carbonate weathering? Is it a good question or it's general? No question is bad or good. All questions are great. Answer is bad and good. Yeah. I will answer. You please. So, uh, so there have been studies or at least propositions that uh, when mountain ranges go up, greater rate of silicate weathering has contributed to global climate, uh, say, decrease in temperatures. And so... Uh, are there projections or are there graphs that have uh, that have been prepared to show that with a rise in possible global temperatures or historical changes in global temperatures, how this rate of weathering or rate of consumption of CO2 and has changed with relative to carbonate weathering and silicate weathering? Good. Any more? Actually, both um, questions are very great. Actually, the um, one that you have asked is the silicate weathering. I just now I have told that silicate weathering. CO2 consumption due to silicate weathering in Ganga is higher than Brahmaputra that which we, we measured. And that what you have asked is my one of the uh, research uh, question that I am keeping that I need to uh, do that. But we have, we have done a little bit of it. I will show you. But here what I wanted is to ask, uh, get, get asked is that I measure water, I measure silica and calcium and uh, the sodium, no sod I measure total sodium ion, total calcium ion. I didn't measure this calcium come from silicate weathering and this calcium come from the carbonate weathering. So how, how can I differ here with the silica and this one? Because I didn't measure sodium from silicate weathering, please come this side or the sodium come this side. No, I measure total dissolved sodium. So how to distinguish that how much comes from silicate and how much comes from the carbonate? That is the question. And uh, the, that is the question that you need to know before solving this uh, equation. So let me answer that one, then I will come to your, and then I think I al already answered that. Yes, silicate weathering and carbonate weathering, this is always, it will vary river to river. It will vary from which area it is going, what kind of rock is there, and uh, it will reflect. And how, what kind of the, so this is, this will uh, affect. 
So how we do <coughs> silicate weathering rate is calculated by, I already told you, calcium coming from silicate weathering, magnesium coming from the silicate weathering, and sodium coming from this one. So then, and uh, how this component is determined is by NAR minus CLR. And this R is the river. So in the river, there will be chloride, and there will be sodium. So then, if you uh, deduce the concentration of chloride from the, so the total sodium of the measured in the river, then the sodium left is the sodium coming from the silicate weathering. This is one time. So then, <laughs> so I measure, I took a water, I measure the sodium. Let's suppose that this sodium is 20 ppm, 20 milligram per liter. Now, I have, uh, I also measure chloride. Chloride will be, uh, you know that in a water, cation should be higher or anion should be higher? Cations, anybody Op uh, against her both? How many of you agree with her? Pani me cation jada hona chahiye ki anion jada hona chahiye? Wo bolla hai, maine na cation add kiya hai, na hum anion add kiya hai. I don't do anything, I am very innocent person. So what is this? I don't know. So this is the, yes, a water will give you a spark. If there is no, if cation is higher or anion is higher. All water are neutral. That's why, otherwise you will take, touch the water and you will get the salt. So iron, yeah. I am talking about ionic, uh, NICB, uh, the normalized ionic charge balance. So the charge balance, the summation of cation minus summation of anion and divided by summation plus cation and anion, this one should not be plus minus for more than 5%. Because if there is a more organic pollution, if you measure sodium, potassium, magnesium, and you measure chloride, sulfate, bicarbonate, nitrate, and then if you, the charge balance is coming more than 5%, your analysis is wrong. It cannot be more than, neither cation and anion should be the, it, it, it cannot be more. So that's why many times when paper comes to us for a review, first thing we see that whether their charge, charge balance is correct or not. If charge balance is not correct, analysis is not correct, analysis is not correct, paper cannot be published, and like that. So then, uh, the, so then there will be chloride. So if we will manage, minus the chloride concentration from the, sol, uh, the sodium concentration, we can have the sodium coming from the silicate. And if this sodium coming from the silicate can be uh, the, and uh, like that, and uh, so then this, these things, uh, I have given, if you want, you can do more. And uh, I am enjoying the teaching, but uh, the, I need to finish also. So, uh, how much time we have? Because, huh? 15 minutes, eh? 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. So then, uh, anyway, one more question comes here is that, not all sodium potassium the chloride will come due to the weathering. There will be some rain addition also. Due to rain, the, the, some, uh, that water got some sodium calcium. So we have to do rain correction also. So it's not so easy, but of course it's not so difficult also, and you can measure if you will measure, and then you can do that one. So we have done this one, I would uh, skip. Now coming to the question that gentleman has asked. So what I have done is that, okay, Let's suppose that water is going and uh, this is the bicarbonate, but how about if there is a, silly, the, I know IPCC has predicted the CO2, atmospheric CO2. This is also we have uh, published. So in that case, but uh, not in a bigger uh, way, uh, but uh, now I can do for all river, uh, entire river of the India or the world, that this, this is the CO2. So then if CO2 increase, uh, it has been given. So just I take into account of the partial pressure PCO2 in the atmosphere. So if it increase, more CO2 will dissolve. So more CO2 will dissolve and then of course all sets of things will occur. So how the, this can affect the chemical weathering rate, how it, uh, the carbonate weathering rate, how it can affect the uh, uh, silicate weathering rate, and how it can affect the, uh, the of course, the, 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 if temperature is increasing, so how is the CO2 consumption can increase. 
So, we have tried to know that if CO2 is this much increasing, uh, bicarbonic acid will increase like this and like that and then we have tried to uh, predict that by 2020, we did this study in 14-15 and we tried to uh, uh, forecast about 5 years. So, yes, if the CO2 will increase, the weathering rate should be increasing. So, it can contribute to that one and but the negative feedback and those things, what will happen is a very interesting question to uh, solve. Um, as a this one. So, uh, that is why I uh, related it with the climate change and all that stuff, but uh, let us do it. I will not take, uh, I thought if it will be finished uh, very quickly, then I will teach a uh, little bit metal contamination, but uh, so I will not uh, do this one. What I can, um, uh, I can talk is uh, surface water ground water interaction. So, then uh, the, this is really, um, I am sorry for the contrast, generally my slides are not like that. So, then uh, the only thing is that, the, now geomorphology, let us come to the geo, uh, and meandering happens, the river strength and like that. So, then there is a high correlation of, was found in the, in the, you know that arsenic is mainly found in the alluvial plains. And we have found, uh, the, it is reported, this is a study that uh, says that uh, the aquifer sediment age correlates negatively with arsenic concentration. It means Holocene sediment, uh, sedimentation of the, uh, the will have uh, the more um, arsenic contamination rather than the older one. So, they did uh, some age dating and they try to, so this is the arsenic, uh, the arsenic concentration and of course, they did the aging and then they saw that whether iron or arsenic is higher or not. And so, the most uh, recent uh, sediment uh, showed much higher arsenic than this one. So, what I will uh, um, say is here, and this is our study, that was the study in Vietnam, uh, the here that uh, they dated the sediment and they dated the uh, arsenic concentration. Arsenic concentration in the recent uh, the sediment was uh, more than this one. And uh, there was major river, flood plains of major river, migration meander give rise to a sediment, uh, the sedimentological architecture that results into the younger and sediment. And this river make the sediment younger and those things. So, that is the, their correlation of there. Then this is the, our study, maybe we are communi community, we will communicate uh, within this month or next. So, here we are trying to do Ganga correlation with the, so then there was a oxbow. Here, the, this is Ganga near Baksar in Bihar and then uh, the, this meandering has occurred in the Ganga and this place has shown most arsenic. Uh, so, it means then, okay, the we found that, okay, the here the sediment is earlier river was going like this perhaps the straight. Now, it goes this one. So, here some oxbow condition has uh, made and then we have found uh, much higher arsenic with that. Uh, so, this one we are trying to uh, the report that how it is. Of course, uh, the uh, Aswin is uh, sitting here, he, he is also trying to do with the primary productivity and uh, the other uh, gross primary productivity relating with that here productivity is more or less. Uh, he is also trying to correlate with some other features, but uh, the one thing is very much clear is that the, if sediment is older, less arsenic, if sediment is recent, it is uh, more, uh, the more arsenic and uh, vice versa. Then uh, the, this is uh, N that will relate to, uh, that will impart as a health implications also. So, in the place where there will be high arsenic, there are high uh, health implications. This paper uh, published in hydrological process, my paper on uh, the surface water ground water interaction. And so, what is, this is the Yamuna flood plain. We took the sample from this just uh, 2 kilometer, this one and the 4 kilometer and like that. So, with this uh, space and we have seen that where it is uh, the uh, impact is high or low. And what we have uh, uh, found is that uh, the, it depends on the rain and uh, many sometimes uh, the in post monsoon river has distinct characteristic than the ground water. But in pre monsoon or the when there is no rainfall this their nature becomes mixed. Which means the very clear because uh, the of course, um, in the post monsoon river they push down the ground water, recharges the ground water, but in the pre monsoon ground water comes into the river. And so, in that case, the this kind of clear uh, the different uh, the interaction we have seen and we, uh, we this is one of the like more than 50 times cited uh, the paper 
and here we have talked uh, that this how interaction so if there is a pollution the pollution the rain will come and this pollution will go to the groundwater and like that so this this thing so we uh, we have uh, shown one more paper that i just want to share and then i will finish the, my work of course we have done uh, this one of course we published in uh, uh, the relatively because and this is the effect of river proximity on the arsenic and chloride distribution in the aquifer of Brahmaputra floodplain. And again, we have taken the sample from the entire Brahmaputra, this one. And the, we have seen that north bank has more contamination than the south bank. Again, river uh, meandering or geomorphology coming in a big way to affect the arsenic contamination. Well, otherwise, I don't see any reason meteorological mineralogical, hydrogeological, nothing else other than the river. Same, uh, arsenic bearing mineral. So arsenic mineral, the point is that uh, there is a, if there is no, uh, of course now it goes to the origin back to that uh, maybe Himalaya has the arsenic or like that. But my perception is that uh, there is a, it's not, uh, even earth crust has arsenic, right? Chloride has, the earth crust has a, so there is a, only thing is that when it is locked in the rock, no problem, but when it gets into the water, there is a problem. And that comes into the, um, I have, uh, my research, uh, the many times we have seen that because of this change in ORP and because of withdrawal, lot of pumping happens, lot of oxygen and the balancing uh, redox condition changes in the aquifer and that leads to the arsenic leaching into the. So I was concerned if there are any industries or so. No, 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 no. Which they, release the pollutants. Are, that's why arsenic and fluoride pollutants are still called as a geogenic contaminant. So you compared the study in Japan. So, so was this during the Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Uh, was it after? Uh, so the, the study which you compared uh, in Hinoi. Okay, yes. in Vietnam. So, so they are also alluvium uh, deposited, not industrial. No, the arsenic content, I think it was increased, I think, after the Hiroshima, the nuclear attacks. Oh, that, that, that is not, I have not found the process. I am not aware of that. Okay, so then uh, the, this is there. So with this, I think that the north bank or south bank of the such a 900 kilometer of the river has the different, we specifically, we did the sampling 10 kilometer north uh, from the river and uh, 10 kilometers south and we took the whole entire sample. This is a PhD of my, uh, the first PhD student or second I, and then uh, the we have seen and uh, uh, no, they, they submitted together. <laughs> so then this is the one that we have and now we have already made that the upper Brahmaputra flood plain have the different uh, the, the hydrogeochemistry than middle than the lower and like that. So this is, we have uh, published it. This is uh, published in Chemosphere. And uh, so river plays a great role in the hydrogeochemistry or the groundwater contamination. That's all. Sir, I have a question. So uh, you said uh, arsenic content has been increased in Holocene sediments but not in older rocks. So uh, is it due to uh, the extra pumping that uh, people are using for their daily domestic purpose or is it due to uh, high weathering rates? Uh, yes, so it's a good question and interesting one too. The point is uh, there is a two aspects of it. One, if I say uh, the Holocene and old one, the point is that if this particular aquifer has arsenic or not, okay? So that will be geogenic. Yeah, so that depends on that which age of the sediment is there. Recent age are supposed to have more arsenic than the older age. One thing then, so that is the relationship. But of course, uh, the pumping uh, or anthropogenic impact affects the redox condition and other uh, hydrological conditions because of which arsenic gets used. Okay, then have a happy learning time. I will uh, give this.